Hello everybody, it's Mikey P, back with another commentary. Remember these commentaries are my personal recollections and a bit of fun facts thrown in, not to be taken too seriously, so if you want to like and subscribe, please do. The, this is going to be on the Friends episode, the one where no one's ready. And this was um, in the third series, it's the epi second episode of the season. And uh, remember, I'm just having a laugh here, I'm doing a bit of info, but I hope you enjoy it with me. So if you like and subscribe, that's the way. Tell all your friends how wonderful my voice is, and you can listen to me on the train, in the village, and all that. Anyway, get your DVD, Netflix, wherever. Select your episode, and uh, press play now. Alright, here we have uh, Joey and Chandler in the front room, and this is probably one of my favourite episodes of the season, if not my favourite episode of Friends. So, yeah, he drank fat, Matt uh, LeBron. <laughs> he did it earlier, he just wanted his mate to have a go as well. Now, how many of us have done that, boys? And here comes Ross, the time bomb, and this is the only bottle show of Friends which is recorded in real time. <coughs> they're all in the, this one set until that little bit at the end uh, when they're at Ross's thing but yes this is the this is a bowl show which is obviously to keep the budgets down cheap show but they really do get the character stuff out here and here she comes Jennifer Aniston with Rock Socks wonder how many hours it took to make that decision and Ross doing a bit of the robot there I think <coughs> doing a nice swivelly dance from the roster the roster David Schwimmer yes um they're all good actors, this lot. I mean, the male actors never really went on to greatness, did they? I mean, they all got a million dollars an episode in the last season of Friends, which ran from 94 to 2004, so they had 10 years. So we had plenty of money. I mean, but the men never really went massive, did they? I mean, I suppose you'd say, oh, here we go, the Credites, with the song that was put together by a put-together band, I believe. Not sure how many hits the Rembrandts had who sang this, but <laughs> anyway, the, yeah, the boys didn't have massive career. I mean, they still work. I mean, Matt LeBlanc went on to um, do Top Gear, I think, in England, and Episodes, which is also not too bad. I mean, not in the league of this, but it's not bad. Um, Chandler, Matthew Perry, yeah, he didn't go on to much else, did he? Did a couple of crappy films on Miss Alma Hayek um, in the 90s and. Uh, See, so memorable. Oh, the whole nine yards, that was quite good. And he was in there with Bruce Willis, and Bruce Willis turns up in this series at some point, and he had to do it for free. Because he had a bet that the whole nine yards wouldn't go to the number one of the American box office, which he did. <laughs> good film, nice fast school movie, want to check it out. Anyway, here's Ross, and he's nervous about his day, his night out, he's got to do a speech, a thing. And uh, the brilliant character, this is why I like the bottle shows, and this is why I like this show so much, is because they, they build, I mean, everything, all comedy is based on frustrations and um, buying heads, you know. And uh, there's Phoebe, she, Lisa Kudrew comes in early with her, the, the least good dress of the three lady leads of the evening. We build up to a crescendo with Jennifer Aniston at the end, don't we? But um, Lisa Kudrew still looks very nice in this dress, and here's uh, Matthew Perry or Chandler being the dorky man, the dorky computer. Get yeah, up! I love the seat joke. Goes all the way through, running joke through the episode, which you have to have <laughs> through a bottle show like this. And we have a few of those, a few of those layers throughout. Um, the fat will come back, obviously, in a bit. Anyway, yeah, the three male, I think David Schwimmer's done, he was in a couple of Curb Your Enthusiasms, another great show, might do a commentary on that at a later date. Um, Matt Blanc, obviously, um, did, uh, did episodes and he had a year of the one, playing Joey in one spin-off show which didn't go down too well, Axe, after one year. Probably the worst character you could have followed on. I'd have probably preferred to... <laughs> to have followed Monica and Chandler in their married life. They could have done that like they did with like, the Not Going Out program in England where they moved that show on and did... Uh, I might do a Not Going Out as well, but never mind that. Are you going to do magic? Great joke. And Courtney Cox probably looking about her best here. Um, she was. Do she did um, 
Scream 2 around now, I think. And this is probably the, uh, the best she looks, season 2, 3, I think. She either got too thin or too old looking, you know, me being a male and a shallow chap. And would Jennifer Anderson really wear that horrifying outfit? Yes, I don't think so. Not good at all. Very hot as well. It looks like a woolen jumper, doesn't it? Anyway, a throwaway joke for this part. Um, everyone's got to get ready. A uh, silly joke here. I wrote a song, but this is how men get on lads of a certain age. I mean, they get into the late side of this sort of laddish men behaving badly type age. <laughs> get up, get up, get up. I mean, they cut bits of this for the English show. There's bits added here. There's little jokes left in. We just pad out the runtime, I suppose, for the ad breaks in America. And I think even the producers had to... Uh, I don't know what she's saying. She's, the answer phone will come in later again, see? So they're building on the answer phone that's there. I'll be around later. Phoebe's, like I say, looking good in her dress. Um, we're waiting for Jenny Aniston, I suppose, was the big sex symbol of this series. I think he was going to open her dressing gown then. The men would have been excited in the audience, wouldn't they? And certain women, I'm sure. Anyway, yeah, this is um, series three, so we're into the relationship with Ross and Rachel. They've just got together. Um, in the season two episode, they got together, and now they're together throughout a good part of season three, then they split up, and I don't really like the where they split up. Oh, and Richard's on the phone, Tom Selleck, the big guest actor of season two, really good. An older man who can hold his own, but obviously it's Tom Selleck. But he's a great actor as well and played brilliant in Friends. Going with um, Monica there, who was um, sort of known for going with older chaps at that time. I think she went out with Michael Keaton for a while, the 89 Batman. I got dressed. <laughs> brilliant lines, so he's quite a stuff. So he just wants her to get dressed, he's going to lead her off and, lead, and they've got this massive apartment that, and the boys have this tiny little apartment across the way. How did it all work? Yeah, yeah, it got so close, made him think he went backwards. I think Matthew Perry probably had to hold the chair in place. I believe that probably the best Matthew Perry look throughout the season. The whole thing of Friends. Got a bit thin in season three, got a bit fat in season four. Got about average in season four, but by then he was sort of fluctuating throughout. So this is probably, between season two and three, he looks his best, I would say. Uh, at the end of season three, he started to look a bit rough. And uh, there's Phoebe messed up with her thing. Crazy and obsessive, see? They're building this up because she had an ex relationship. She broke up with Richard because he was too old. She wanted kids. Um, and another weird... I mean, she could be the assistant in a magic act if she wore that, didn't she? I mean, bloody hell. Oh, he's not happy. Yeah. And neither of these are going to get dressed. And, oh, no, they're going to sit on him and they're going to do a sort of... And they're mad about whitewashing in this program, but... What does that matter, you know? I mean, it's funny. I mean, no one cares. This could be black, yeah, China, Asian. It doesn't matter, does it, really? It's a humour sort of universal. This sort of humour is universal, so it doesn't really matter what colour anyone is. They could all be black, they could all be Asian, and it would still work, you know? So, I don't know, remake it if you want. This could be this would be brilliant as a stage show with a couple of the other ball shows. Could throw it together, do an hour, hour and a half stage show, friends, and then pull your ethnic minorities or whatever, ethnic alterations, whatever you like. And then they could do it. And then that old fashioned telly from, this is the middle to the late 90s, about 96, 97, I think. Um, the, obviously, it's still early days of the show, so it's all going very well. Yeah, so this is 96. My son who loves this show would have been, would have been one. <laughs> one and a half by this time, which is really weird. But he loves this. He's, him and his girlfriend tend to love this show. And, it, and it, see, it's sort of... It's um, timeless, really. The humour does not day. There are a few references to people who have been forgotten about, I suppose. But really... This is fast. This is basically stage fast. Everyone's going in and out, making their entrances, making their exits. She wants to talk to her ex-boyfriend. And she's going to leave a message. <laughs> You've got over... Oh. <coughs> and now he's going to leap it into the chair. And of course he's a bit closer than the time that. He had to be a bit later, I'm sure he had to hold back. Uh, Matt LeBlanc, obviously the more conventionally handsome of the three, but I believe everyone loves the Chandler. 
and David Trimmer, uh, yeah, they're just a bit geekified, obviously, as a scientist of this type. Tends to be stereotyped in a program like this, but he's sweet, he does a good put. <laughs> he would be good as the answer phone answerer, wouldn't he, old Joey? That could be his next acting job. Uh, Courtney Cox, uh, yeah, she was early fame. She did uh, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, with Jim Carrey, who also starred with Jennifer Austin, uh, Jennifer Aniston later on in Bruce Almighty. Um, I think Jennifer Aniston asked Courtney Cox how he was to act with him, and she said he's fine. Just went crazy after that, I think. Started to take himself a bit seriously and lost his mind. Never mind. Uh, never mind, genius. See, I'm doing my own script. Oh, and she thinks this is Richard's new girlfriend. She sounded brilliant. brilliant. See, this flows so perfectly, this episode. That's why I like it. So, I mean, there's the fake New York, so that we can have um, the LA studios pretend to be in New York. The fake yellow cabs and everything when you go outside into the street set occasionally. I mean, Friends was consistently one of the best comedies come out of America forever. I mean, The Big Bang Theory, I suppose, is okay. Follows the same format with, um, like, a token Indian character and a token... Um, yeah, that's it. We have the token Indian character who doesn't speak, which is slightly more stereotypical than this. Because at least m most of the people aren't mute in this, and they're... they're um, I know you progressed in that, we'll talk about that, we ever get to the Big Bang Theory, but, um, they never had this, they never dumbed down their characters in this, and if they are dumb, they're creatively dumb, like Phoebe, I mean, she's like a hippie, a new age hippie, which is big then, probably still get it, but, and you got the, 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 the snarky, clever, I mean, A.A. A. Milne, I mean, I don't know, I mean, we'll get that reference about Winnie the Pooh and that sort of thing, deal whole. Slightly dated, but still, it's good. It's good stuff. It works. Deal holes a funny word. And he's taking the couch away with him, the cushions, the chair cushions. I'm taking the essence. I mean, it's the way they play because the words on the page would not read that funny. I mean, they've got to bring something. There's no one in the room. See, like the stages, looking at the audience, out towards the audience, and responding with them. And I wouldn't mind seeing Jennifer Aniston dressed as little baby. That's just one of my afflictions, I do apologise. And then Chandler's got the sheep, which is definitely a man joke from the 90s. <laughs> We're all off our own flavourable sheep. And no, Phoebe, don't wear that because it looks crap. <laughs> and now you see, for us, the frustration is building in us. And like you say, fr comedy comes from frustration and buying heads and I can't think of the word, I'll get to it at some point. Sheep. Hey, what you do on your time? Might be a good Clark Kent. Ross Superman type guy. It's got the look. Put glasses on him. Could be a good Clark Kent. Oh, uh, here we go. He's in the same vein as the bloke who plays Shazam, isn't he? Could have played Shazam, I suppose. Zachary somebody. Um, the text they got, I think. Yeah. Anyway, um, here they are having their conflict. Commando, this is, I'm sure this originates here because Commando, I didn't know what it meant for a while. And they say that as well. But Commando, obviously they don't wear underwear for some reason. Which I don't understand. Uh, why do soldiers, whatever, not wear pants? Is it in case they crap themselves? I don't know, never know, whatever. <laughs> opposite is opposite. And this is brilliant when this reveal was made in a bit. See, in town, like a stage, he's got nothing. And she's got a nice Christmas decoration on her for me. And of course her character, she, the lady Lisa Kudrow also had success in uh, Analyze This and That. I can't remember which one was first, but the Billy Crystal movie, where she played this all crazy wife. Um, that was a good, or fiance, that was a good role for her. She, she's, and then she sort of did the comeback, and she sort of died off a bit. But being not the conventional Hollywood starlet and they all get over 40 and it's all done, you know, really. Because I'd say her character equates mostly to the Penny character in The Big Bang Theory, if we're going to do those parallels. And Jennifer Aniston's character, does she relate to anyone in that? I don't know, but of course she's the sweet but slightly dim girl next door. Well, here he's losing it. This is where Ross loses his mind, apparently, and gets a bit aggressive. And apparently was 
not only that being aggressive in this, but you know, got to have drama, that's it, drama and conflict, that's the bloody word, conflict creates the comedy. And she looks slightly nervous, but then she's tiny and he's quiet, I mean he must be knocking 6-1, I haven't looked at his thing, but um, but because some of the episodes require more um, setups and bigger sets and things, they can cheapen it by just having the main cast with a little, he got over to the bad place, brilliant. Because Monica's character was always obsessive and a little bit OCD and stuff. And Marion Chandler that she does later on, Lion's her character, brilliant match. And uh, I think that she might have asked to be Lion and they must have thought, well, if we partner her with him and that Lion's her and that works. And of course it does work. And uh, like I said, I wouldn't mind the series to carry on like that. Oh, and uh, Michelle, Tom Selig's daughter. I wonder who that was. I wonder who played Michelle. I wonder if it was anyone famous. Oh, they say it's like the Chinese restaurant episode of Seinfeld. Oh, what a Seinfeld. It's not as good as Friends, I don't think. My personal opinion. Yeah, feel free to argue down below, as long as you subscribe and like. Then you're allowed to criticise me. <laughs> I love a lot of Seinfeld. I don't like the bit where he's on the stage. I think they could take that off. I know they like to do his stand-up round it, but I didn't like that. I liked it when they dropped that for an episode or two. And here's the Donald Duck thing, which I believe Matthew Berry took credit for, but I don't think it's true. Um, so yeah, community sort of builds on this. I might do community later, but again, this is just a class act that everything that follows. I mean, Fraser, I don't like as much. I don't like the lead in that. Kelsey Grammer, I've never found him particularly funny. Too smug to be funny. Don't like the old boy. Don't like Jane Lee. See, I just don't like Fraser. I might do it to moan about it, but I know you want to criticise, but they might, but that ran and similar, but earlier, like Seinfeld did. Um, yeah, I don't know. Tessa Thompson. Hmm. What's this all about here? Yeah, that's weird. Oh, we'll create line for line for the video for Moonlight, song by... Uh, never mind. Create by an all black cast, old Jay-Z, with political t uh, agenda, as always. Very clever man. Not, uh, good. Well, I'm not going to say, probably let me shot. <laughs> She's going to do her correspondence. Now, who would do their correspondence? Even in 96, this is... Probably dated. Correspondence ages. I'm reckoning we stopped doing our cold correspondence. And what has she got there? A file of facts? And who's she corresponding with? Has she got a pen now? I mean, this is a bit contrived, but it's quite funny. I mean, she's purposely contrived this so she doesn't have to go. But Ross has been broken down for being the ignoramus, manly man he was a minute ago by being too cruel to her and being over the top and nasty. And remember, I haven't got that much in it. Just remembering when I was in my 20s when I watched this, about, so I was 23, something like that. So yes, I'm older. Doesn't mean I'm irrelevant, just means I'm older. Nuh, nuh, nuh. Christ. Um, and, um, yeah, I was in my laddish phase, I suppose. Just got out of my first marriage, uh, my fault. And uh, was into the dating again, messing around. So this was well into my zeitgeist at the time. All over it, and loved this at the time. Uh, a girlfriend of mine at the time, actually, I think I got her into it. She's been a band. Uh, uh, she was a country singer. I hate country music, so that's irrelevant. Um, but she got, I got her into this. She'll be good. These were videotapes back then. You used to buy a massive box set from HMV. You can buy bits of it, three tapes, or the whole series in one big box. And I think I bought uh, the country girl. Oh, he was totally aroused by that Chandler. Got addicted to pain pills at some point because he was a tennis player and injured himself or something. Oh, and this, brilliant. Excellent. See, this just flows. I mean, he's there doing this. Oh, I would think he's doing this live. I don't think they cut this too much. They probably did. So I wrote the film from the Albert Hitchcock film when he tried to do it. And they only had 10 minutes of film between takes, so they had to stop every 10 minutes to change the film. But this, I mean, actors make mistakes, la da The audience is there all day. They, I don't know if they're as captured as a Dr. Phil audience, but that's another story. Look him up. He seems to be a bit of a bastard. Um, anyway, sorry I've been away so long with commentaries, but, you know, got things to do. I've got to live, baby. Anyway, this really little interaction, because these two, they should, when they move these out from each other, I mean, I know you have to expand to make it run, but their best episodes are in season two and three and four when they're just together. 
you know, and they lived together. And I didn't like the Jennifer Aniston, Joey relationship. That was like brother and sister getting it on. Cringed me out completely. Didn't like that at all. Didn't watch, don't watch those episodes. I like the Paul Rudd coming in for Phoebe later on. We might, well, I mean, we're dipping it out, friends, because there's so much of it. I just thought I'd do my favourite episode first, and I'd really, this is just brilliant. This is, to me, like the Only Fools and Pools episode, Only Fools and Horses episode, No Greater Love, because there are scenes in that that flow, and this joins together so perfectly. I mean, it's fluid. I mean, bang, 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 you know. The, the jokes are brilliant. It just flows, it never lets up. I mean, there's drama here, there's... But they seem, hey, you're going to drink the fat, because they need a set. They've had the fat, I wonder what that was in there. It looks like sort of sugar war and an egg white or something, or an egg yolk, I should say. The, what it is, I don't think anyone ever drinks might actually be fat, because I don't think anyone actually drinks it. I mean, Lucas Aid with rice in it or something. <laughs> I don't know. Because um, Monica's the cook, she does this all. Anyway, I think we're getting towards the end of the drama as well, which is weird. They're all heading out to Ross's speech. And now she's going to go to petite and beautiful Jennifer Aniston. I mean, she's got a sort of triangular face, I suppose. And so she didn't like the Rachel cut when she is growing out at this point. Um, she obviously likes the conventional look, but... Although Jennifer and I suppose you can, she tries to have range, but I don't think she has a lot of range. I mean, she's got more range than me, obviously, as an actor, but um, none of them have particularly massive range. Never seen them in dramatic roles. I mean, oh, and here comes dress number two. Here's your second whammy uh, with Monica uh, Courtney Cox looking fantastic in this dress. This really does suit her rather well. And I remember seeing her in some crappy old Bruce Springsteen thing. And uh, the pop video, and of course, Masters of the Universe with Dolph Lundgren. I hope to bow up like a sort of Arnold Schwarzenegger crappy version of watch it if you want to laugh at the really horrifyingly creep effect, crap effects of the day of '87. Anyway, yeah, she, that's where she started, I think. Doesn't seem to, but she's always looked younger now. She's starting to look like the cat ladies that they all turn into, you know, when they have too much Botox, like Charlotte Crosby now. If you haven't heard of her, I think she's in uh, Geordie Shaw, which is an English thing where a lot of Geordies get on the lash and end up being complete drunk and bummed in real life, which is, you know, reality telly scripted to be dramatic, that sort of crap, you know. Might do it then one day. If anyone's ever interested, just tell me down below what you want me to commentate on, and I'll give you my weird stories about them. And now she's changed the out game, you see, is this really possible? Can you hack into someone's mobile, into someone's answer for, I mean, this is irrelevant now, because everyone's got mobiles, everyone hooks in. And now the cab's ready, and they need to go, and here we go for our third whammy. I'm ready for the excitement, because we've had Phoebe looking great, Monica looking better, and this is like traffic lights, isn't it? <laughs> Red, yellow, and now we're going to get green. Oh, and this is, oh my God. And those other two dresses, no way. And she had the Princess Leia in the episode before this, and she looks freaking fantastic. I mean, God, any man would die for some of that. And I'm just talking like a man. Apologies for all the snowflakes out there. Go and blow away in the wind. I say what I want. This is my channel, my opinion. And yes, yeah, she's gorgeous, and she's going commando too, which is... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, dear. He is now a broken man. He looks straight out of navel then as well. Hmm. See, and he comes to the end there. Didn't that move? That pace. Brilliant. And here we have the final scene where Chandler's in the lavatoire again. And Ross is making a half drunken. He thinks it's a funny speech, but isn't. And here we have this, uh, I don't know if he's English transatlantic actor. I don't know where he, who he is. Maybe he's, he's just come in for the, the day or the half hour or whatever. And now we're going to have the give me your underwear. We're going to jump straight over the jokes throughout the episode and go for the whammy final. <laughs> Which I think is brilliant. But you left the chair area and it just shows the us old boys. I'm not quite as old as that dude. But it shows that us old boys also have a sense of humour and can relate. Because I know Chandler is, or Matthew Perry and all this, are now the same age. They're older than me. So, yeah, they're all a lot older than me. <laughs> I'm early 40s, 40s, by the way. And wasn't that the best episode ever of this stuff? Oh, brilliant. I love it. Oh, dear. 
And all you got to do is like and subscribe and tell me what you want to do. We will build this channel up. I'll try to do a bit more on the commentaries as I can. If I have more time in my schedule, been building and doing lots of other stuff that's unexciting to you, but there you go. Um, but I really have enjoyed walking through memory lane for me and the time of my life that was pretty fun when I was going out and enjoying the life and and things are still funny on telly and you didn't have to be a complete uh, I don't know how you make comedies nowadays but that's a discussion for another time I hope you join me again in the future for some more commentaries this is Mikey P like and subscribe signing off good evening <laughs>